So I had an event happen this week. I uh I was coming up sixteen and I came across a wreck. Um I was like the second person there. When did this happen today? Earlier this week. Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday. When, was it Wednesday? Yeah, it was Wednesday because you were at uh, I was at a small group. Yeah. Um and so, you know, um run up to the ve- one vehicle was turned over on on its top. Flipped over. Uh, and I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to be able to get to that person quickly. The other one, they already had the door open, so I'm like, I'll get to this person. Administrated the first person you come to. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, run up. Guy fish is kicking the door open. Managed to get him out. I've got my uh, first aid kit. By the way, first thing, lessons learned, remember where your fucking first aid kit is in your vehicle. Know where your first aid kit is. Because Make I... sure your stuff is kosher and up to code for you. Don't have yeah. dull scissors. Mm-mm. Mm. That Did was you not have me, dull scissors? No, that no. was not me. Uh, it was, did you no. have dull scissors? Let, let me, oh, no. Let me finish. No, let he's me going finish. to finish, but there's things you need to upkeep in your own mm-hmm. first aid kit. So he's and getting in Texas, into that. scissors go dull very fast. Well, he's getting into this. So we, we get the guy out. He's got a head, an, an obvious head wound head bleeding injury. all over the place. Get some gauze out of the first aid kit. Apply apply to the wound. Me and the other guys start assessing for more injuries. You know, I'm talking to the guy. He's a pastor, you know, at a, at a state hospital. State hospital pastor, yeah. yep. Um, I don't remember his name. Sorry. I, I, I just, I was not focused on his name. Right. I was focused on keeping him talking and um, assessing in, these injuries. Questions, assessing, but you honestly I couldn't don't give his really name care. out here anyway. Well, well, I no, but I it, was commenting it, yeah. that I couldn't remember his name. It's one of those I'm asking the questions not to care, well, but to keep you cognizant. Well, you care, but it's hey, no, I'm, no, I don't care. If I'm administering first aid, I could care less if you're a Betty, if you're a Joe, if you're a John, if you're a Sally. I am asking I, you this only to keep you cognizant, keep your right. brain active enough so when the people that do the job come do this. Yeah, and so I'm I'm still with the guy and the other folks have gone off to the other vehicle because first responders have shown up. Um and they're over at the other vehicle. A couple messing minutes around. by the way, I think you said. Yeah, it was it was a short it was a short run. First responders had it. They were on top of it. And we've heard at least around here and around us, it's about a 15, 20 minute wait. And when I asked with you on the phone, I was like, well, how long till EMS showed up first responders? And you're like, Oh, it was, it was a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. So one it that was relatively fast, one that tells me either a, they actually showed up reasonable time or B you were so caught up in the moment as administering aid, but you weren't that gone when I talked to you. Yeah. That I was like, okay, it actually probably was A versus B. Yeah, I mean, I didn't feel like like I was out of like I didn't feel like I was in like you weren't out shock. of shock. I know the adrenaline rush hit later, which is most yeah. military people. Yeah, I mean, guaranteed, I mean, obviously the adrenaline rush hit. Guaranteed, by the time you got out of your truck with your first aid kit and started applying gauze and doing all that stuff and then checking for other three to five injuries, minutes was at least five minutes. Three yeah. to five minutes, yeah. The amount of time that came after that is, you know, but in the country for for first responder to show up, was it was it PD or was it EMS? So PD, PD was there, like, first, and then, you know, firefighters were there, and then EMS was there right after the firefighters. Okay. I felt bad for the guy because I'm pretty sure he was dealing with, like, a community med kit. Because mm. he went to go cut the guy's shirts, and he pulled the pulled the fucking trauma shears out, and he went to to chop Which the is shirt. Where my is this a out. firefighter? No, this was a. I, it might have been a firefighter. It might have been EMS, right? Okay. Um, and he went to chop, and he was like, "Fucking." Realistically, dull now he could be either be. His dual trauma hatting. scissors failed. Well, That's they were crazy. dull, so it either could have been a firefighter or EMS attached to cops because in texas alone we have both firefighters dual hatting and cops dual hatting but your primary yeah. isn't cop or firefighter right you, you you have firefighter paramedics or pd paramedics as well yeah so um, he bitched about his trauma shears being dull and i was like 
grabbing my first aid kit, those trauma shears right there, and some other pedestrian who had come by grabbed them out of my aid yeah. kit because, you know, and I'm going to thank my buddy Steven because he was the one who told me to put trauma shears in my aid kit. Yep. Sure I have enough, trauma shears in mine. Came in and they're not handy. expensive. No, I they're have... cheap. I've, I've... So two things that aren't in the normal first aid kit, trauma shears and clamps. Yep. I'm not Tourniquet. even saying not and well, tourniquets. Tourniquets I have a tourniquet are in, in my most. Bike. If you buy a first aid kit without a, a at least one tourniquet, I will always say buy an extra. Mm-hmm. But at least one tourniquet, don't buy that first aid kit. And splints. I won't. I will not buy. Well, yeah, splints. Even then, you can buy popsicle sticks and put them in there. Yeah. I mean, this but, is something I mean, we like definitely fingers. want to touch on. Not even fingers. No, you can. I have personally used popsicle sticks for legs and ankles, like your joints specifically. You're going to have to show me how to do that. You can put it there, and if you wrap it properly, if you wrap it properly, it's not going to completely fix the issue, but they can walk on it'll, it. It'll add some stabilization to Enough it. Enough stabilization, especially downrange. Yeah. Is like it's going to work. It'll get you to a point where I can care about you more. It's still gonna hurt. Like oh, crazy. it's going to hurt. I mean, but downrange at least is like right. I'm dealing with shit. You're dealing with shit. I'm shooting downrange and yeah. I'm self aid buddy care fixing you. That you know, I a mean, we used to stick the the sixteen inch ones. We are used good to, enough. There's a there's a company out here in the hill country and. Oh, there's one. I, I um, gotta figure out who it is. Relic, because, <laughs> Relic yeah. got it. It's you, um, you buy the bag for like four hundred fifty, five hundred dollars. It's, it's a five hundred dollar bag, but you don't buy it. So what you do is you push your nope. You push your story out. It's like, hey, this is what I'm doing, and technically you can pay for your own bag. So technically you can buy it, but you need about five hundred dollars, and it's it pretty much goes on um, uh, whatever site it is. I'm trying to push my business i'm trying to push this object kickstarter it's pretty much a kickstarter okay you throw it out there and people throw money at it and you share it across the board and you have so long to make it come to fruition i gotcha so it it's happened a, with relic but yeah. they went to at the time hbc the church they started okay. going there they're working with um they actually had a couple cars renovated by um the business that's up the road from here uh, I think it's Muscle Rod Shop. Really good so, shop. So, so what's special about the bag? So when it you has... use a product in it and you let them know about what you... You give them an itemized list of what you use. They'll used, replace it. They replace it for free. But what's the other thing that's important about the bag? So it has uh, 187, 100, 180 something items yeah. in there for first aid care. One and of the most important things about bag. the bag is that it comes with an oxygen tank. Does it? Yes. Yes, this yes, one does, does come with an that oxygen tank. That was part tank. of the, the, because I remember talking to Relic about And a regulator? This. Yeah. It, yes. It, 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 and it, it, you have to get it retested every two years because it just, it goes out. Absolutely. It was one of the big things for the folks is that because there was something that happened and if there had been an oxygen tank available, oh, yeah, it yeah, would have yeah. changed because, the outcome. Yeah, in that I remember specific that. case... He hadn't gotten tested in a couple of years because he lived outside of Houston in Angleton. He called it Analton, Texas. Mm-hmm. And um, he moved over here to San Antonio, living with me at the time. And he had this bag. And the reason we installed his sissy bar was so he could have the bag yeah. there. And, you know, I, I'm going to say this. By like... the way, Relic made these names. He is about to start his own business. Nice. For woodworking. Good. It's good. Uh, me and Mike had both gave him a couple of tools, and he's gonna start pushing woodworking. So when he officially pushes his shop out there, we're gonna start broadcasting because yeah, absolutely. he does good work. I love his work. I have a camping chair that's completely wood. It's two different points you put in, and it's comfortable. And it is comfortable for camping. I mean, I have my rocking chairs that I like just mm-hmm. as much, but it definitely meets. Of value, but let's take this back down to the first aid incident. That I do want well, to jump back to the first aid. The... Can I go ahead? Can go. I say something? Uh, first? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Pearl, 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 oh, stop, oh, stop, oh, Pearl, stop. Oh, nope, nope, we lost Kel. Camera's gone. All right, you guys. So I'll look at the middle camera here. What? Are... 
but, but <laughs> that's, that's the, were you gonna say no, something? yes i want to say something so i i my personal belief is that there needs to be a lot more people out there that are less selfish and 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 more community driven like like Listen, veterans in, in this instance i will say that there was a bevy of people going out there okay there's a country wanna, folk though no were, i wanted to touch on this just as much as city he does. folk don't no, give go fuck. mike go mike and then i'll say my piece i i will say i i saw like i obviously i pulled my truck over i saw that this incident wasn't taken care of i got out i tracked down my glass breaker mm -hmm. and uh seat belt cutter in case i had to bust a window yep. open in the first aid kit right got him out Immediately walked over. There were other folks over there, obviously on the phone calling nine one one. These are obviously folks who don't know what to, what do, to do in right. this yep. situation. But if you hadn't come over, there were already. I think there were two guys over there already trying to get this gentleman out. That's what I want to touch on. Being in military city, that's that's what San Antonio is called for as long as I've been here. At least yeah. is like being around enough first responders, enough military, enough retirees. That okay, no one's here. Okay, well, I at least have something. I at least have knowledge. If I don't have the first aid kit, I at least have knowledge. To there's a re there's a reason I keep a first aid kit in my vehicle, and it's because of incidents like this. Now, right. I will say something about my interactions with that first aid kit. I was not as familiar with the first aid kit as I should have been. Right. I have a, a brand new first aid kit in my Forerunner. I am not familiar with it at all because I haven't even opened it now, yet. Now, I will thank <laughs> him because he did a review of my first aid kit, and he was like, you need to pull all this stuff out of the bags because it's it was expired. still in the bag. So I did that, and that helped out. And, I, and my first aid kit's labeled, and it's got labels on it, and that helped out because I didn't know where shit was. And so I was like, labels for an EMS across the board help because you yeah. don't know my bag. Because yeah, right. the way I have, the way I always had my kit downrange was different than the way everyone else. I want all my dangerous stuff on the right. Why? Because I can shoot left-handed. I'm going downrange. I don't care if it hits target. I care if it makes you hide. It makes yep. you cubby. So I don't care if I'm just throwing hate till someone else can come. Yeah. I'm not looking while I'm shooting anyway. And I want my primary hand, my right hand, to be able to grab my shears. My tourniquet, my gauze, my tape. I want all this right here that I know I have to use and I can use my mouth. And right. I'll I'll rip it open and is it sanitary? No, but I'm taking care of issues. Oh, no. I mean, does it I mean they can fight infection when they get to the hospital. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's about I, saving their you're life. Either in the dead very or moment. You're not. Another thing when you're downrange, I mean at least. I had gloves inside my kit. I didn't think to put on gloves. Exactly. In the moment your adrenaline is rushing so much you don't think about putting on gloves. So, so what happened is I'm I'm holding the guy, I'm talking to the guy, and the EMS shows up, and the first thing he does is he hands me gloves and says, "Hey, put those on." And I was and immediately I was sitting there going, "I had gloves." Before you go into that, I want to touch on this uh, shock. We talked about dealing with shock. If they have high traumatic shoes, shock, can you lift up your boots? So boots specifically, let me see it. So if you're laying down, boots, anything at least ankle high, hands down, can go right here on both sides of the head, and it keeps the head stable. That helps with shock and, of course, lifting up your legs. And if it's a car wreck, it helps to keep the neck from moving, which is a big right. deal because you don't know if there is some kind of break. And it slows the heart rate. So that, that was the biggest thing that I talked to you after about yeah, this yeah, and, and you're like i didn't know that i had never heard of this before it was I like never heard of take this. off their shoes and even if they have converse converse will still work but you have to take off their socks and stuff their socks in their shoes it's not great but it works enough till they can at least stabilize the patient and you know as i'm sitting there and i'm i'm talking to the guy he's mentioning he's got groin pain he's mentioning that he's got there's something wrong with his foot. He's mentioning that there's something wrong with his side. And obviously, I know about the seat headband. Belt, seat belt issue. Well, and, I, and, and the other thing he says is he hurts all over. He hurts all over. That's going to happen. Right, right. right. Exactly. And so when the EMS shows up, everyone's asking him questions. And in, instead of him responding, I'm going, he's got groin pain. He's got, you know, he, this right. is yep. where his pain points are. Because he's in... 
some weird loop, right? He's in so, shock. Yeah. So when if if you if you arrive on scene before first responders are, you're actually the first responder. So your job is to gather information. What is what it what are his vitals? What is his pulse? What is his blood pressure? What are his ailments? What what is what are his which, injuries? Which I male, female, age, name. I am not good enough to get pulse and blood pressure just off this. So this happened. Like I can't. Sp- uh, I can't remember how to do even right now I couldn't tell you what my own so fucking 15, pulse was. You look it's at your similar, watch, yeah, 15, 15 seconds, seconds times four. So and it's a quick grab. It's very much so realistically this or this. What needed to be in my kit would be like a nine line. So my yeah. my heart rate should That's be ninety two. What needs to be in my kit is a nine line, which says, "Hey, pul- get pulse. You get pulse by this." I'm realistically looking for a heart rate with today's populace of eighty to one ten. That is a average but- heart rate. But realistically, what this all buckles down into is what I immediately talked to you. I had actually yeah. talked to you beforehand. Yeah, about earlier this, this week. Or um, before this happened, I wanted. I told him I wanted to because we do power tools all this all the time we on our other channel about and everything. Safety and first I was like, aid kit. I want to not safety. I want to me and him and his wife if she was available and Kelt if you're available. I wanted us to sit down and do a first aid refresher. Yeah. Because I mean, what, did, what did you do in the military? You did first was, aid, buddy care, refreshers, right? Yeah, I mean, I was also an EMT, so right, right. But but like I was a I was certified combat lifesaver, right? So would it? But I need that refresher. It's been so many years removed, right. so I need to I need the refresher. So training at least absolutely annually. because I mean even even then like there's there's always advancements in medicine and. Like the, the I wouldn't even push the advancements in medicine. I would just say it's just it's across the board. There's been enough changes that yeah. even if you are, I don't care if you're nineteen eighties EMS certified, you can still save a life. You yes, and, no, you and can't tell me you can't. You you can the so and the only but, reason I go down this is because over the past 10, 15 years, what have we heard? Eggs are bad. Eggs are good. Eggs are bad. Eggs are good. This is just what we're intaking. Right. But it was like, ignore- milk is good. Milk is bad. Milk is good. Milk is bad. Let's ignore all the changes and everything for a second, gentlemen. I mean, there's... And okay, if well, you well, have the same 1980s EMS experience, if you can save a life still... That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about practice. There are laws... Do you, do you go to the range? Fuck no. You know why? <laughs> I ain't paying those prices. Should you go to the range? It's been a couple months. Should you? Yeah, absolutely. Should you go to the range? Should I go ca- to uh, Should I go to your house and set up a target? Absolutely. Do Do you carry? Should you go to the range? Yes, yes. absolutely. Once a month. Absolutely. Once a month. The same thing could be said for first aid. Oh yeah. You Hands should down. train whatever you expect to use. Right, and that's that's also why they have. They have laws, right? Because my my certification has been expired since 2008. But they have laws to protect individuals like you, you and me. Private if citizens, I pull up, yeah. If I pull up to an accident and, and somebody's had a heart attack or some kind of cardiac event and they're not breathing and I start doing CPR, but I break their sternum because I push too hard and that person dies because I've shoved their sternum into their heart, I am... I can literally be sued because I killed that person. Did you know actually this changed but, in 2019? But I can now not, I am now defended by the law, yes. whatever yep. it is, because, because I can also be sued because I didn't stop and render aid. Yeah. Yep. So because I can now be sued for not stopping to render aid, I am now protected under that same law that if I use too much force and break the sternum, yeah. And shove that sternum into their heart, and they end up dying anyway. Whether it's a, it's a new cause, I'm that was that I can't yeah. be I can't but, be sued. But before we get close to intermission, I did want to thank the the Bandera officers, and I wanted to thank the Bandera firefighters and the Bandera EMS because y'all showed up. They showed y'all up were, in force. It sounds y'all like y'all were professional. Yep. Y'all y'all had it under control. Um. I know that 
I, I had an issue because one of the pedestrians said that the person in the other car was DOA. I did not assess that so, myself. Yeah. I could not because I, I was the primary at so this when point. I, when on I this looked, person. when you talked to me after we prayed for the individuals, because you called me at small group, we prayed for both of them. Thank you, by the way, for praying them because I was praying for them myself. And it, it was, there was a, there was a, enough peace there like there was a peace with what was going on and when i looked at the news article it was one was in critical and one they didn't succumb to injuries but they're dealing with the injuries of the individual it's like okay so that tells me two individuals but i i had this peace with it that was just like okay they're at the proper place they're where they need to be a lot of people actually showed up in force and dealt with what needed to be dealt with by the time i had the first gentleman loaded onto the um onto the, the wagon the truck yeah there was a bevy of folks trying to get the other one out of the vehicle i mean that that's good i do love living around military city because we have a a plethora of people that know self-aid body care yeah because military city i, I had i had there were folks coming up there was like two of them who came up and it was like hey i'm training ems I'm just a pedestrian. I'm, you Let know, me how assist. can I help? How yep. can I help? Yep. And I'm just sitting there holding the guy's head, head keeping him sure stable, that, making sure that he doesn't move because this is what the EMS wants from it. Because at this point, I am, I am disassociated. I am second, all and I am doing I'm is listening to what he says. To do. Yep. You know what I will say though is is the number of accidents that I have stopped at to render aid to somebody. With the plethora of hospitals that we have in San Antonio, almost every time I stop and render aid, there's a nurse that stops. Good. And and that says something about our well, so I, our, I our will medical totally agree people on this. here in town. So my mom's looking at moving down here. Hell yeah, let's go. She's not looking. She is going to move down yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Come we'll on. Have my I mom. support this. We'll Come have on, Chief. We'll have my mom or my dad on the podcast. Mama Dice, once. get down here. Doctor, She's going to be like, I've Dr. seen it. Cammy. Dr. Dyke. <laughs> you may not be my doctor, but you're still doctor mom to me. <laughs> you're doctor of nutrition, right? Uh, and she, oh, pff, everything she's been dealing with. But no, she's she stopped at a couple of wrecks and she was like, oh, well, this, this, this. And she technically is the highest ranking member here. And then EMS shows up and I love her heart in this. It was like, here you go. What do you need from me? It's like, I'm licensed for all these surgical everything, but what do you need as the EMS? As the number one, this yeah. is your job. How can I help you? And we have that in San Antonio, in the greater San Antonio area that I love. Absolutely. It's awesome. 